This is my Gucci, it's not Gucci. Hello everybody, welcome back to my YouTube channel. My hair is doing my head in today because I never really wear it straight, but I'm trying not to curl it so much because curling it really damages it. So I'm trying to embrace the straight look, but I just don't really like it. Anyway, that is nothing to do with my video today. The reason we're all here is because you've seen it in the title and probably in the thumbnail. I am doing my handbag collection video. This is probably my most requested video ever. I'm so excited to film this for like so many different reasons. I think number one reason is because before I started YouTube or Instagram or anything like that, the videos I always used to search for and watch would be handbag collection videos or like what's in my bags because for as long as I can remember I have been obsessed with handbags I feel like if you've got an obsession with handbags if it's a natural thing I have the obsession anyway my collection isn't massive it's just something that I've built up over the years I think one of the bags was a gift the rest of the bags have all been purchased with my own hard-earned cash so no abuse in the comments I work hard for my money I save it up and this is the result anyway I'm gonna jump straight into the video because I feel like this video could be kind of long because every single bag although there's not loads but every bag does have a little bit of a story behind it so if I don't carry on now we're gonna be here until Christmas just a little heads up, if you're not into handbags, this video is completely not going to be the one for you because I'm going to turn into the biggest handbag geek you have ever met during this video. So yeah, just to quickly let you know. Okay, so my first ever bag, I think, was a guest handbag. I got it for my birthday when I was 17. I'd saved all my money. My mum and I went to Phoenix. I'd been looking at it for like months before I actually bought it. Um, I think it was like a couple of hundred quid. I absolutely love that bag. I wore it literally to death. I think then my second bag was a Juicy Couture bag. I'll actually insert pictures of these bags if I can find them online just to give you a rough idea of what I'm talking about. It was then a DKNY and then I think another guest bag. Those bags were worn until they literally went to bag heaven except for the Juicy Couture one I think I sold on eBay. So they are not here right now. So what I'm trying to say is, is those bags aren't here right now for me to be like, this is my first ever bag. But my first ever like premium designer handbag was this one right here. Now this one out of my whole collection was the only one that was ever a gift my lovely mum got me this for Christmas one year and honestly I was so shocked I'm one of those people that hate surprises I find everything out like at Christmas time I literally go through her cupboards and open stuff that's wrapped just because I need to know what's inside with this she left it at her friend's house so I just never found it she also put it in I think a guest dust bag so when I opened it up I just thought like I was gonna get a bag from guests and it was this so yeah honestly I wore this bag so much it's actually still in really good condition considering the amount I used it all my bags though are in pretty good condition because I look after them like I think people would look after their children I can't remember the exact price of this because obviously I didn't buy it I think it was about 400 pounds which shout out to you mum unfortunately you've never bought me a bag since but if you are watching this video though mum feel free to buy me another bag like honestly I'd love a new Louis Vuitton no I'm only joking I was literally so made up with this bag and I actually since have given it back to my mum I felt like this just wasn't getting used anymore by myself so I ended up giving it back to her and now she uses it pretty much like most days to be honest So yeah, really good quality and well the wear and tear on it is literally minimal So that was my first ever like premium designer handbag so the bag that came after the mulberry bag was the bag I'm about to show you. This bag brings out so many memories because it was the first bag I ever really bought myself, like my first proper designer bag. I saved for this bag for I think about a year. I remember going to London for the day with two of my friends and in those days we used to go to London like twice a year. Now we go like twice a week. But it was just such a big event and I remember just feeling like I'm going to London with all my money. We went to Selfridges and I purchased this handbag. Now, this is the Louis Vuitton Never Fall. I think it's the PM, which is like the middle size of the different sizes that they do. Um, Never Fall tote in the like demi, is that what you call it, print? Now, I feel like this was a lot of people's first designer handbag just because it's kind of a brilliant everyday bag. And trust me, although I don't actually picture myself that much in this handbag, I still wear this every single day. Like I use it for the gym, I use it for work, I use it every single time I travel, I use it for the beach. This bag, cost per wear, has been unbelievable. Like, it's still amazing condition. I actually got this five years ago now. There's not a mark on it, because it's just kind of like plasticky. I don't even think it's real leather. I don't really know what this Louis Vuitton material is. But it's just so durable and hard wearing. And honestly, I love this bag still to this day. 
and yeah it's one of the best bags in my collection it's definitely my most used bag in this whole collection the inside i went for like the red striped lining i think when i bought this bag it was 600 and something maybe 700 pounds this bag now i don't actually know the price i'll leave it on screen and i'll obviously link all these bags down below but obviously louis vuitton have a price increase every year so i can probably guess it's quite a bit more expensive now um that is the thing when you buy premium designer handbags they're like an investment because they just go up in price that's what i tell my mum and dad every single time i spend money on handbags so after my louis vuitton i did actually go on and buy a mulberry del rey i'll leave a photo a mulberry alexa as well i also bought an alexander wang bucket bag you know the one with all the studs on the bottom all of those bags actually got sold on ebay just because they're very fashionable bags at the time but i soon went off of them they devalued and so i just got rid of them so after those bags that i obviously can't show you because i sold came this bag now this bag was another one that i'd been saving up for and i knew i'd wanted for absolutely ages it was like an it bag at the time but at the same time it didn't go out of fashion like the other bags i just spoke about did now i went to paris for my 22nd birthday i went with my mum and my auntie and we went on a little shopping spree and i walked into celine because the bag i'm talking about is my celine nano and i saw this bag and i'd also seen it previous on Kendall Jenner but it was absolutely sold out everywhere and there it was in Paris I actually debated between getting this one or the Celine Trapeze I'll leave a photo if you don't know what I'm on about um I ended up deciding luckily on this because I think the Celine Trapeze kind of had its day where this has just ended up being a really classic in my opinion bag I also saved a lot of money on this bag because I think I paid something like 1300 euros i actually found like the little card the woman gave me um to kind of write down the price because i went to the shop i'm denied she wrote down a price for me and then obviously i went back and bought it a couple of hours later um but yeah i saved loads of money number one because stuff is slightly cheaper in paris and number two because the euro to pound conversion rate whichever it works was pretty strong in our favor and number three because obviously since then celine have had huge price increases i'm unsure of the price of this bag right now but I know they still sell it in stores and I am guessing it's probably a lot more than what I paid for it. But I still love this bag today as much as the day that I bought it. It has been well loved, it has been well used, but as you can see it's still like in amazing condition considering. And for me this bag is proof of the fact that you should just spend that little bit more money and buy something that is going to last forever and be something that is more classic than the mistakes that i made in the past was buying stuff like mulberry and alexander wang like fad bags because although i still love those brands they're very like it bags for the moment where this has just ended up being a forever bag and it's worth every single penny i spent on it so yeah that was my next bag now after my celine i didn't buy anything for like another whole year because truthfully i just did not have the money i was working and stuff but i'd spent a bit of money i think i'd gone on holidays and stuff like that and i just didn't have the money so around 18 months later it was definitely about a year and a half came my next bag this was another bag i'd thought long and hard about i'd seen it all over instagram and i just knew that it was going to be my next child so the bag i'm talking about is this it's the gucci dionysus in the size small but i never really get this for gucci because it's actually the medium size but they call it the small i don't know why they just don't call it medium but you know what i'm trying to say so there's actually like a super mini version of this then there is the mini version then there's this which is the small and then there is the medium so yeah i've basically got the middle size i originally bought the size down from this i had it for about two weeks i then decided that it was just too small so i went and swapped it for this i still absolutely love this bag i know a lot of people are selling theirs and stuff but i just think it's a classic obviously gucci print my nan has got bags of gucci print and they just never go out of fashion you literally can wear them forever it's once again in perfect condition pretty much there's no real marks in it at all i like this bag because it's quite big a lot of my bags are kind of small but this fits a lot of stuff in it so i do like that about it my only criticism towards this bag is the strap on it now the strap is just such an awkward length you can't really wear it cross body without it being uncomfortable and i feel like when i just put it on my shoulder it just hurts but that is pretty much the only negative thing i have to say about this bag other than that i still absolutely love it this bag i think set me back 1300 pounds um they've definitely had a price increase since but for me it's been worth every single penny cost per wear has been minimal because i've worn it so bloody much 
and still love it to this day. So very soon after I got this last Gucci, which was in the September, I then bought another bag in the December. I think because I'd had a little bit of time out from not buying bags that I just went on this like bag binge and bought loads within a really short space of time. So the next bag that I got was also a Gucci bag. I think I was a real Gucci lover at the time. Still do like Gucci, but maybe not as much now as I did a couple of years ago. So yeah, the next one that came was this. I got this from Heathrow Airport, so I got it duty free. So I think I paid exactly £1,000 for this bag. This bag now costs, I think, £1,400, which is crazy. Um, this is same as the other Gucci. It's like the medium size, which is actually called the small, um, but it's the medium size bag that they do in this particular style. So this is the Gucci Marmont. It's gorgeous. You can see how buttery the leather is on this. Once again, it's perfect condition. It has not really been worn that many times and especially not worn that many times in the last few years. I actually think I'm gonna be selling this bag. I'm gonna be really sad to part with it, but I just never ever wear it anymore. I just feel like the color doesn't go with my clothes and stuff like that. And I have not sold a bag in about three years. So it's not been an easy decision for me to make but i just feel like it could do with going to a better home and i'm going to put my money towards something else that i feel like i'm going to use a lot more but yeah it's still a gorgeous bag and if anyone wants to buy it let me know in the comments so after the splurge of the two gucci's i did not buy a bag for over a year because the next one i'm about to show you i got in the february so like a year and two months after I bought that last bag because truth is baby girl did not have any money honey it's like i was broke i did not have the money to spend on bags so the next bag that came into my life was this little bad boy this is the louis vuitton alma bb i bought this it was actually only last year that i got this bag i think this bag set me back about 800 and something pounds which i think is actually really good value for money for a design handbag i know it's still a lot of money but in the grand scheme of handbags i think this is super affordable i love this bag still but i have to admit i do not wear it as much as i once did i wore it to death last year but since buying this bag i've ended up with a few other louis vuittons which i just reach for more than i do this particular bag but if you are in the market for like your first ever designer handbag i fully do recommend this bag it's so versatile you can obviously wear it like this for like nights out and stuff it's got a crossbody strap for daytime use i love it it's really structured it doesn't lose its shape the only downside and this is the only downside but this happens with a lot of louis vuitton bags is this brown leather here stains super easily if i show you on the back here you can see that stain and it runs all the way to the bottom now that was because I got drunk and spilt white wine all over my bag and it completely stained it. This is actually the only bag out of my whole collection that, that has actually got a mark in it, which makes me super sad, but at the same time, I feel like it adds character and I probably will never sell this bag because I feel like it's the type of bag that I will like pass down to my future daughter or something like that. Also, another thing you need to know is the fact that this leather changes colour. So when I first got this bag, this was like really almost like a bright creamy white and now it's like a dark orange. I like the fact it does that. It obviously ages the leather, but just to give you a little heads up on that, that is definitely gonna happen. After that one came another Gucci bag. Now I actually got this bag last summer. I bought it because I was going to Ibiza with my friends and I wanted a bum bag for the trip. I mean bit extra to go and buy a gucci bum bag but i thought you know what i'm gonna buy it and i'm never gonna use it again so i'm just gonna sell it straight afterwards now i am not kidding you this bag is up there with how much i used this never full tote like i use this bag to actual death it goes with everything i love the way you can make it into a bum bag so you obviously just put the strap across it here and wrap it around your waist so i love how it looks with like jumpers with blazers it's actually really good as well because even though it's super small it does fit my phone in a card holder car key and a lipstick which what more do you need it's super affordable i think this bag was like 675 pounds which i know sounds like a lot of money for a small bag but trust me cost per wear this thing has literally been unreal i absolutely love this bag as you can see like the size difference to this it's obviously from the same Marmont collection, but this is like the super mini and then this is cast as the small. So yeah, absolutely love this bag. If you are in the market for it, I cannot recommend this enough. Definitely one of my fave bags. And although I'm not the biggest fan of Gucci right now, I still just love 
how this bag is just great for every day. So my next bag was a bag that was definitely bought like spur of the moment. Not much thought went into it. I bought it because I was going to Ascot and I wanted a cute little bag that I could wear with a pink dress and a cream fascinator that was like part of my outfit. And I wanted like a whitey cream bag. And at the time, this particular style bag had just boomed. Now this is the Chloe Nile. And I think it's the most unpractical bag I own in my collection. Actually, that's a lie. There is one other that's really impractical as well. But this has got to be up there. It does not fit my phone in because obviously it's this awkward shape. It's also cream, which gets really marked. And the truth is as well, well this bag is definitely not one of my favourites is because although I love Chloe, I hate the fact that before you know it, your bag becomes like old hat. They change their bags so much. And like every season, a new style bag comes out. And before you know it, your bag from like 2017 or 2018 literally looks like the bag from that year, if that makes sense. Where unlike Louis Vuitton, like this bag has been around for years, but I could wear this now and it would still look current. This just looks like it was last year's Chloe, which it literally was. So this bag I think cost me £1,100, which in truth is probably the only bag that I can say right now in my collection was a complete waste of money. I hate the fact it doesn't fit my phone in. I hate the fact that I could go and buy this now in a designer outlet for a fraction of the price I bought it for because that really annoys me with Chloe that they do that. And I also hate that it literally looks like the bag from 2017 slash 18. But at the same time, I do actually kind of still like the bag and I love it when I go on holidays, which is why I don't actually get rid of it and sell it. After that, I definitely went on a bit of a bag spending ban. I didn't buy anything until the February of this year. And the bag which I bought then was this little bad boy. I know a lot of you have seen this on my Instagram. I also unboxed it on my YouTube channel. I absolutely love this bag. It is so useful. It's the most perfect shopping bag. So obviously, like you can wear it crossbody like this. I love Louis Vuitton print literally i wear a lot of nudes and neutral clothes and it just goes perfectly like with the color scheme of everything that i wear and this was definitely worth every single penny it cost i think it actually wasn't too bad though you know i think it cost like 1100 pounds maybe it was slightly less but it's like 1080 pounds which is crazy considering this cost the same amount of money and i literally hate this bag in comparison to this so yeah i ended up getting it from a personal shopper because they are super hard to get hold of but I absolutely love this. The only thing I'd say is the leather on this bag is quite similar to what it is on my Alma BB in the sense that it ages, it changes colour and it also gets kind of marked really easily. But like the Alma, I really love the fact it does that because it adds some kind of like personality and some characteristics to the bag. So that was next. So after the bum bag, I was like, I don't need any more Louis Vuitton print and I'm just kind of like done with buying bags for a bit. And then my SA in Louis Vuitton texted me and said, you know that bag you've been after for like the last two years? I was like, yeah. She was like, just to let you know we've got it in stock. I was just like, how can I not say I want it? I literally had been after this bag for so long. And the bag I'm speaking about is this. It's my Palm Springs Mini, which features about 7,000 my Instagram photos. There's actually a bit of a funny story behind this. I'm sorry if you already know the story because it'll be boring if you do, but if you don't, it's kind of funny. So my SA texted me to tell me she got me this bag. She was like, you need to go and pick it up tomorrow though because these bags sell really quick and I can only hold it for 24 hours. I obviously don't live in London. I said I can't get to London like I have work. She was like, can you get anyone to pick it up for you? So I text all my friends. They were like, sorry, can't do it. And then I just got to like desperate measures. And I knew that a guy I'd once been seeing who I'd actually completely fallen out with lived very close to this Louis Vuitton store. So I just thought, you know, what? I'm going to call him and see if he'll do me a favour. So I rang him up. I told him the situation. He was like, yeah, yeah of course, I'll go get it for you great so he says send me the money and i'll go and grab it tomorrow so i was like okay cool so i sent him the money he then blocked me so i just sent him 1350 pound because that is how much this bag costs and he blocked me and i thought oh my god he's gonna literally run off my cash anyway cut long story short it was just a joke he unblocked me he went and picked this bag up and i am so happy he did and i went to those desperate measures because this i think is if not my favorite bag in the whole collection one of maybe in the top two no i actually think this is my favorite bag so yeah well worth the dramas but absolutely love that bag after that bag is my second to last bag which you'll all be very thankful for because i feel like this video has been so long and you've all realized what an absolute bag geek i am but this bag i bought in july of this year it is my fendi baguette bag now this bag was bought on an absolute whim usually as you can tell i think through all of my bag purchases 
except for this one i was drunk i'd seen it on one of my friends tia and i thought oh my god i want this bag Harry and i went to selfridges and i just bought it it cost me 1850 pounds i actually think it is my most expensive bag it is the most expensive bag in my collection and the next day I woke up with huge anxiety. I was like, what have I done? Why have I bought this bag? It's material, it's gonna get ruined, it's gonna go slouchy. I don't even know if I like it, I did actually love it, but I just don't think I love the price. And I didn't wear this bag for a whole month just because I just couldn't believe that I'd bought it and like, what was I thinking? Anyway, since then I've plucked up the courage to wear it and you know what, I absolutely love it. I actually think it's my second favorite bag next to my Palm Springs Mini. I think it's gorgeous. It might end up being a bit of an it bag, but at the same time, I think Fendi print is pretty timeless. The baguette style is also pretty timeless. And yeah, it was a lot of money, but I think it's worth it in the sense that it's just so gorgeous. I feel like the strap on it and everything just makes it so nice. I've actually padded out the bottom of it, so hopefully it won't go too slouchy. My only criticism of this bag, because it is material, there are like a few little snags on it. I'm a bit worried how it's gonna look in a few years or after a bit more use, but it's gorgeous. And I just think, sod it, use it, wear it, love it. You know what I mean? If you are still here, congratulations to you because you've made it to my last handbag. My most recent handbag in my collection is this little baby. I got this actually, I think it was at the beginning of August, so it's definitely this month. It is from Jacquemus, 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 I don't know how you say the brand, but it is this absolutely tiny, minuscule, pointless bag that I own. Now, this bag I saw on Instagram, I actually saw it in a magazine and I was like, oh my God, I need it. I know so many people are after these bags and they are sold out everywhere. I just was super lucky. I went on the website one night at like two in the morning and saw it on there and I purchased it and here we are now, me and my miniature child. Um, this bag was £350, I think, which is actually the cheapest bag in my whole collection, but it is also the smallest by a very long way. It also comes with a long strap as well. You can obviously wear it crossbody, and you can also somehow wear it as a bum bag. I've not quite worked out how you're actually meant to do that. But yeah, I just think this bag's really fun and cute, and I love the fact that no one has it, and I'm the only person, or well, one of the only people that can get hold of it, and I'm feeling very smug about it, I'm not gonna lie. But yeah, I just think it's really cute. This brand is so in at the moment. I love everything they do. The clothes are unreal, but they're also really fucking expensive, so you know. But yeah, hopefully one day when I win the lottery, I can have a whole wardrobe full of these miniature bags and all of their clothes. Before I wrap this video up, a question that I've been asked to answer um, at the end of this video is what bags am I after at the moment? What is on like my wish list? And what am I gonna get next? And I actually really like this question. It also gives me myself something to work towards. And hopefully next year when I do my update, bag collection I can look back on this video and think yeah I got that bag or I didn't get that bag or whatever it might be so my next in line if you follow me on Instagram you'll already know this I feel like it's gonna be a Dior saddle bag I've wanted that bag for literally ages I then thought I kind of missed the boat with it wasn't gonna bother but I still literally love it I think I'm gonna get the black one with the gold hardware and then also get like a crossbody strap that is why I think I'm gonna sell this Gucci because the dual saddle bag is a lot of money and I need to sort of sell something to put towards it so this is a bag that I just don't really use so I think sadly I'm gonna put the money from this towards a new Dior saddle bag. And then the next bag on my list is a Chanel Trendy. I don't own any Chanel bags because they are fucking expensive, but that is my dream bag. A Chanel Trendy is, I absolutely love that bag. I'd also just like a classic Chanel, or you know, the flap one, that would be really nice as well. Well, we have reached the end of my handbag haul video. I feel like this has literally gone on forever. My voice is about to go. But I've enjoyed doing this video so much just because I'm not sat here boasting about all my bags. But for me, all my handbags have like a story behind them, like I told you. And also, they are such an achievement for me because I bought them all with my own hard-earned cash. And they also remind me of like a time in my life of like when I purchased them and how I purchased them and why I did and all the rest of it. And I just look at them and just feel like a proud mum. No joke. And I just feel proud of myself that... Even five, six years ago, I would never have dreamt of having a collection like this. And now I've worked my ass off and here I am with them all. So hopefully it's come across that way and it hasn't come across like I'm boasting or anything like that. Anyway, as always, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have, please give it a big thumbs up. If you don't already, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. And if you do, I shall see you in my next one. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye.